I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you finished watching the part one on the JSON toolkit and MQTT video. And uh, we set up the JSON schema to export uh, data from all of the BACnet AHU devices as a single string publish point using the one schema. Now, uh, following up on that, we certainly could do something uh, similar uh, using the same schema. Maybe I could copy that and go to the wire sheet of an individual device and uh, you know paste in this uh, schema object. And what I've done here is actually using kind of a custom component, but uh, this component is uh, using a B format uh, uh, script syntax to come up with an actual org that might be the BQL query to limit the scope to just air handler one uh, and then select the um, display name of the point and the value of the point and the status from uh, from control points. And so we could uh, link mark uh, this object and then go into um, this uh, query uh, property here where we have the JSON schema query that we had set up previously or I had set up previously and I could link from the format to org resolver and I could link into that query org property and so the idea here is that uh, I could set up devices with some component to sort out what that necessary BQL query might be and then link that into the query org of the JSON schema and what will happen in that case is uh, we should be able to execute the queries. And you'll see that in this case, it only found 23 points underneath um, air handler one. And then when I generate the, the JSON in this case, uh, it's only going to be showing the point data from air handler one. So this would let me be a little bit more granular about the information that I'm publishing instead of publishing one message with point data for 285 points maybe I'm publishing you know a message per device with just say 23 points or something like that whatever it might be under the device so you could easily um, set up publish points for each of these JSON schemas you know one under each device and link the output slot to um, the publish point and that's one way to go about it so a little bit you know definitely more than more work than building a single message. But let's take a look at uh, some options for working with some relative JSON schemas as well. And so the idea um, with a relative JSON schema here is that uh, it's similar to the JSON schema, uh, but it has a uh, base query property here. And the base query property is what we need to uh, first uh, set up. And we could use either um, a BQL query or, a, or a, an equal query or combination of to find the components that we want to process. So in this case, um, I might look under the uh, BACnet network and look for um, custom type. And it'll be uh, from the BACnet module. And uh, it'll be a BACnet device. And maybe a predicate uh, you know, where name is like a two star or something along those lines. Uh, could be looking for an equal query for marker tags or, or things of that nature. Uh, but the idea here is that uh, this base query found 15 BACnet devices in the station. And uh, those 15 BACnet devices then, or 15 components, whatever they might be, they're BACnet devices in this case. Then when this JSON, relative JSON schema component executes, it's going to execute one time for each of the components that it found using the base query. And the schema that we define here will then uh, be updated for uh, just that particular device, right? So um, when I generate the, the schema, It'll go through, and uh, you might not really see it updating here, um, but you see the last result is Air Handler 15 with its MAC address and status and that sort of thing. 
Now there's a output history button you can click over here and this will open another tab with a spy view and it'll show you the last X number of executions and the default is 10. I've changed the default on the property sheet there uh, under the, the config to 15 so that I could see all of the messages that were processed. So when I generated the JSON, uh, what happened was it went through and for um, this base item right here, air handler one, it went through and processed and generated that schema. So that schema had air handler one as the name and, and the MAC address and so forth of air, air handler one. Then it generated again for air handler two and air handler three and so on. So this one component went through and executed once for each device that it found with the base query. And that, that's the important distinction to kind of understand here is it's not just finding, you know, uh, all the points under all the devices at once. It's going to find a device and then process some queries underneath that particular device. So uh, in this case, um, we have a, a point query or I've added a point query from the, the or query from the palette as well here. And uh, and, the, and we want to find the points associated, you know, with that, with those devices or with that specific device. So in this case, um, we want to use maybe a, a relative um, query. And there's a couple ways we can go about doing this. Uh, you know, maybe I'll use a combination of NQL and, and BQL here. So we want to use a relative um, query. So slot colon uh, pipe will then process the point query against each one of those individual items found by the base query. And maybe we'll do uh, an equal query for um, HS point and HS uh, you know, equip ref uh, relation is outbound to something that has an HS AHU marker tag on. So that equal query is going to go out and just find all of the points under the device which have an equip ref relation back to the device and that device happens to be an HSAHU. Now I probably don't need to even do that because uh, I've already limited the scope with the base query to just the backnet devices that are named AHU something so I, I probably can just check for HS point but anyway uh, then we'll do a BQL query uh, to specify the projection here right so we'll say display name uh, as point and then uh, value with facets uh, as value. And uh, if I really want, I guess, status uh, as status. And then we can order by uh, the first uh, column, which is the name of the points. Okay. And then under uh, the schema here, where I'm including the station name, the count, and then information about the AHU, um, like the address and the status and the display name of it and so forth, uh, then we can drop in a bound query result here, um, point data, uh, and then we just need to select the, the query here for the, the point query and the style that we want to see displayed. And when we generate this, then uh, it, it'll go through for each of the 15 um, devices and where before it was just displaying the name, the address and the status, right? Now I've told it to also display point data as an array, which is the result of that query being run against it. And then we're going to see each of the um, that schema of the BQL query, the, the projection. So we have the point name, uh, the value of the point, and the status of the point. And for each one of those output messages, it'll include the data for, for that particular error device. So it lets us get a little more granular about a message um, instead of one big message with all the point data again. Now, uh, we're going to kind of take a pause here. And we'll pick back up with the next part and we'll talk about how do I link this relative JSON schema then out to um, MQTT points to publish them. And there's a couple different ways we can kind of go about doing that as well. So stay tuned to the next part. Thanks.